Welcome back, everybody, to the Red Bull Team Brawl presented by the all-new 2016 Honda Civic. My name is Frodan. I'm joined by Hyped, and this time we're going to get ready to go in straight into game number one, or heat number one, of Tempo Storm versus Team Liquid. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen because these guys' decks are awesome, and, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a mix-up based off what we thought was going to happen. The first is who's playing which deck. That's a really cool mix-up. It turns out uh, the first person that we're going to watch is Raynad, and he's not playing Shaman. He's playing the Warlock. So that's very curious to me. He's facing off against Savitsu, sitting across from him, and he did end up putting in the ever-elusive Elise Starseeker. Yeah, may as well get it early, but we do remember that their entire game plan was getting on the board early and not losing it. Yeah. So this is not the... That, he already mulliganed, right? Uh-oh. I, I see them laughing a little whimsically, but if Raynan was isolated in his bedroom, or his living room, excuse me, I definitely see that frown or that smile turn upside down. I totally messed up that line, but you know exactly what I meant. And look at that right off the top. Savitz picks up one of his only two one-drops here in the lowly squire, so... Raynette will definitely need some help here off the top of his deck, and that's not it. So, you know what? The fact that, did they put Mind Control tech in this deck, or did they put it in the Shaman? I think, it, I believe it's in the Shaman. Because it might actually be the case where they need to. Savitz has a Mad Scientist or a Jeweled Scarab. Jeweled Scarab, something that you want to explore on turn two, because you can pick up a three mana card to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you really want that 2-2, two -two. and you want, the, you want the Scientist to go off before you actually draw the one secret in the deck. So now, a couple of decisions to be made. The first is... Do I coin out the Imp Gang boss to be proactive onto the board? I mean, Demon Wrath will dodge the Imp Gang boss, but you also stop yourself from taking damage. But you do pop the secret, so there's a couple of things that's going through Raynad's mind right now. Yeah, or Temple Storm's mind. In Constructed, it's almost always Demon uh, Gang boss first, because you can't really trade officially into it. Then you punish them with the Demon Wrath, and then you get the trade you want with the Imp Gang boss. Yeah, it's a really good observation, and that might be the case here, because Savitz has to just go Flame Cannon, and then uh, he's going to pick it off most likely with... His lowly squire or his mad scientist depends on what he wants to incorporate here because mad scientist dying gets a secret out of his deck. So you might want to actually take more damage on the scientist, yeah. even though you waste some damage. Plus, the, the lowly squire could grow to be bigger later. Sure, sure. And, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that as Reyna draws more of his mid game curve with the Warlock, not only are cards like Frost Wolf, Warlord much weaker. Um, because they don't have minions on the board, but he's also going to draw a lot of his cheaper minions later into the game as well. So the, the, thankfully, the Warlock Hero Power is one of the best at dealing with it because you're able to excel by having a lot of low drops and squeezing in your Hero Power to be mana efficient. Yeah, you can see he's passing up the Demon Wrath for maybe later, and plus he doesn't really want to pop the Scientist now. It could yeah. be Entity, then he can't play his 4-drop. Yeah, I love the, the Warlock deck specifically, too, from Reyna because he has access to a lot of AoE. He has Hellfire, he has Demon Wrath. Those cards help him climb back onto the board, and there's some of Warlock's best cards. To go with that power oh, was well. there? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, maybe some mind games that are being tossed up by Firebat. AoE is really hard to come by, so yeah, if they yeah. have AoE... Yeah. But they actually end up having it, so... Mm -hmm. Look at that. And there's a, a bunch of Discover cards here at the option of... Savit's what it looks like, and again, he's going to have to look at what gives him the best value off of the curve because he still doesn't have a direct five mana play, and that's going to be the hardest to fill out. Oh, look at that! Nice, another Tomb Spider. The meme is complete. You know, the one of the, the jokes about Tomb Spider is that uh, its car text actually reads "Discover another Tomb Spider." I did not know that. <laughs> so this is the map in the deck. Yeah. So, I mean, how good is the least Starseeker in a format like this, you think? Does it actually get drawn out to that point where you can play the Golden Monkey, or is it just because you want to fill out the four mana curve and they didn't have anything yeah, better? Yeah, I think I mean, it was just a 3-5. There's almost no penalty. If you turn your hand into all legendaries, that's almost always going to be good. Mm -hmm. You can just tap for more cards. But I think the whole deck, the way the deck was built was to take board control early, and that's not happening against this mage deck that had almost no early game and somehow has board control. Sure, sure. All right, well, turn five coming up here. The Frost Wolf Warlord is the mana efficient play, but how is Raynat choosing about it? Doesn't look like there's much debate at all. I'm actually curious to see how these guys are discussing the plays. Oh, I forgot the, the secret off the Mad mm -hmm. Scientist. That's a big reason why. So let's go ahead and tune in with Tempo Storm to see what they're talking about in their plays and their games. Still play this, huh? Hands me six life. I wonder. I can ease your pain. I want to play this and this and trade. You're trading, right? Yeah. I will. If I don't trade, I will be wrecked by this. 
you gotta talk louder, sorry. It only starts, uh, we only uh -huh. start hearing you. Okay. okay. Yeah. If I don't trade, I will, if I don't trade the 3-3, three, three, I will be wrecked by this. What do you think about playing the 4-3? This one. Yeah. Yeah, you, you play it, right? Yeah, mm. I think you play it, go face with the Whirling Zephymatic, then trade with the Whirling Zephymatic, yeah. go face with the other guy. Yeah. Uh, but I won't have anything on board next time. I mean, he has to kill it, basically, is what you're forcing. So he has to uh, eviscerate it, and then that gives you the initiative to play Boulder Fist Ogre, hopefully. Okay. What do I do here? Uh, well, power Overwhelming's being used on your egg this turn, right? Yeah. And then I guess you just play Belcher behind it. And trade into that the 6 3. You want to? Uh, or you can play Frost Before Lord. Yeah, maybe better. I don't know. One of the two comes down. <laughs> Alright, so we see that Tempo Storm does actually have some ways to help each other. At first, I was a little worried because in the beginning it didn't seem like they were helping each other much, but you know, being able to lend each other a hand with some of these complicated trades and turns. Um, and, and again, it looks like overall Tempo Storm doesn't really have much of the board. And when I'm looking at all these games, I don't really see, like, you know, when we sit bounce from Raynat to Eloise, it just seems like all of them have one thing in common, they're behind. Mm -hmm. uh, Firebat was doing pretty well on the Shaman, but, I mean, I'm sorry, Eloise was doing well on the Shaman until that one turn that we saw where it didn't look too good anymore. Mm -hmm. I liked how Liquid, I was actually listening to Liquid, and they were talking about, like, they're trying to assess the overall themes of each one's deck. They're like, oh, Firebat has a Beast Druid, uh, and then they're like, Raynat has some kind of Warlock, etc. And I like that, just analysis. Yeah, just helping sharing information. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and, I mean, speaking of Team Liquid, let's go ahead and listen to them and see what they're talking about some of the plays, because there are some interesting board states. Let's analyze them each through and see what they're talking about. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, looking good go for face. Yeah. It's so low, yeah. Looking good. So Firebats is just like an arena deck, it looks like. Yeah. I think there's strong um, strong beast synergy, but... It's, not, it's just like an arena deck. So well, it's like... no, it's much more beast synergetic. I wouldn't be okay. surprised if there were like two Houndmasters or Ram Wranglers in there. Okay. <laughs> just let you know. Oh, wow. You need a idol for... Yeah. Minion. You can get Force of Nature, but I think a minion might be better. Like all the yeah. minions and freeze that... Might start, start with Whittle. minion. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just like that. Hopefully keep it off the crow so you can finish off the... Ooh, oh, can, you, can you go face? He said 13. You can time rewind it, but you might die by that time. Yeah, it might be too slow. They have that coolant, but... Mm. It doesn't work on the, the night. Three, but you can innervate out the 7-5. The, the and like freeze the 2-3. Yeah. Two, three. Yeah, yeah. alright. I think I like that. Tiger Deadly Oil. It's pretty big. Time waits for no one. Okay. Yeah, well, I could go Dark Iron Skulker, take 10 to the face. Dark Iron Skulker, 10 to the face here, right? Oh, you should finish your turn. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's tank it. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, uh, we, we saw a player had showcased Doctor Boom, but <laughs> I, we saw no reaction from Trump yeah. whatsoever. Uh, just kind of stone faced the entire time. So wow. I mean, it looks look like we have Team Liquid being a little bit more quiet and Temple Storm being a little more chatty, which is interesting because I know Team Liquid was kind of talking about their synergy here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're seeing Temple Storm strategy getting on the board early and never mm -hmm. losing it, just not work out as like. Liquid's slow decks are all having board control. And uh, it's a very cool yeah. play here from Team Liquid that we're talking about, being able to try and uh, maximize 
their value here. Uh, King Zelic, I wonder what it can draw because Firebat still doesn't have an opportunity to kill his opponent Freezing right now. Freezing trap, maybe. Would be perfect. No, it has to be a minion. Uh, and that has to... Oh, it can draw a taunt minion with the beast Tomb Spider. No, yeah, it's just... Okay, so Unless he can old, also shoot his scientist the old or Patriarch, something. Silverback Patriarch. He doesn't have enough board space. Uh, yeah, he would have to hero powers. He has to so he has to make a lot of decisions here. Does he also have enough damage to potentially kill with a boom bot hitting face for four? Seven, ten, fourteen, eighteen. It'd be eighteen damage, I believe. Wow, this is really complicated. I mean, what if Mad Scientist also has Yeah, you can hero enough. power your Mad Scientist. Should he have a good trap? Or you, mm, yeah, it's no, only I think it right? might be or misdirect. All right, misdirection. King of beasts, but it's not. It's not enough mana. Not enough board space. Wow. Oh my goodness, Firebat was one turn away from being able to win this, but it looks like Trump was able to weather oh, he's the storm. Going to go for the hero power. So it's a one in eight chance to win. Uh -oh. oh. Oh, we were one off because we forgot the damage from yeah. the actual boombot itself. So yeah, that would have been it. But looks like he had to go into the one in eight. What an exciting end. So that's one point for Team Liquid. We have to check in with other people. It looks as if uh, Eloise on the Shaman. It's a very close game between the Rogue and the Shaman as well. Yeah. Demon Wrath is getting pretty good. Ish. I guess I live tap. I guess so. Yeah. I guess we lose the game. Mm. I mean, Demon Wrath and trades. And just play everything. Shall we put a kink in your plans? Wait, what happened in your game, Melois? Play Flurry. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, this now looking good then. <laughs> we just lost the board immediately in all three of our games. <laughs> well, she had board with well, Blood Flurry. Like, uh, um. Yeah, but but even if you, you don't play Blood too. Flurry, I, I still had board, lose. but then died to <laughs> stealth. <laughs> right. Rewind stealth. <laughs> I never had board because I never drew a two drop. Yeah. That is the pro the warlock one has the least amount, but also I mean I, I think I win the game if I ever draw BGH, but I can't really rely on that. <laughs> you didn't even chicken anything. What? Uh. <laughs> Like how unlucky is that in this format? That is that is really unlucky. <laughs> what um, spell can I beat that he would put in his deck on purpose? Yeah. Dark Rogue is oh. uh, Death Rattle. That could do it. Death Rattle one. Yeah. What's Blood Mage Thanos? Do you just tempo the four two out there? I think so. Why not? I it's you know why it's a mistake is because there's almost no way I win this game. Now I tell him I have it. That's true actually. Yeah. I should have just held it. I mean, but e even if they know, like, how do they play around it in the future? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you, you get to the later turns, you got to play your big cards if you got them. Uh, he has Tinker, uh, Poison, Deadly Poison. Tinker, Deadly Poison? That means he probably has two flurries. <laughs> Sonos uh, and uh, Copy Death Rattle 3-4. Two, two of them. And other Death Rattle. And uh, the backstab, uh, backstab everything. Oh, vendor. Oh. That's GG. Oh, not a not a good opening round, but it's still possible to win the event. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your your two games are unlucky. Yeah. 
<laughs> all right. Well, it looks like Tempo Storm or Tempo Three Storm not off to a good start I, at all. I and, think that uh, was just a whiff, a, a three-way riff. A three-way whiff. Three well, you know, it, it was actually pretty interesting that they didn't fall completely behind on board on in the Shaman mm -hmm. game for Eloise, but that Rogue deck looks pretty nutty when you have the yeah. Blade Flurry with all those weapon buffs, uh, and then you also have really powerful cards like Thanos with some AoE. It's, it's really strong. Yeah, it is actually only one Blade Flurry, and in an arena deck, it's hard to find that one Blade Flurry sometimes, mm -hmm. but we saw, we heard Firebat being afraid. It's like, oh, there's probably two, and now right, they're probably right. going to be playing around Blade Flurry the yep. whole time. It's only going to work in dog's favor because then he just drops the Anubarak. It's a lot of mind games with how the series continues to develop because it's again it's not just one player or one game that you have to stick on the entire time like you're not playing that rogue for shaman again you're not playing that warlock uh, against the mage again you're going to be playing against a different class so you have to play with that information something that rain had brought up that was extremely valuable now that i've revealed big game hunter it it's something that they'll be aware of Firebat with counterpoint of you can't really play around it too much because it's difficult to assess when you have it and when you don't. And sometimes mm -hmm. the threat of it is even greater than having it. Yeah, you can't exactly bait the big game hunter with right. your other seven drops. Yeah, sometimes you don't um, want to play the seven attack minion with the fear of the big game hunter, but he doesn't have it. Instead, he has a better card that exactly. can tempo on the Doctor board against Boom. you. So sometimes you can't afford to do it. So once again, the team with the Dr. Boom has gone... Not uh, is, has actually lost, and in this case, they've gone zero three to start things off. They have to win uh, have at least five of the next six games in order to win the series. Mm -hmm. That's very difficult. And I think we're about to go into game number two. They're queuing up. We have Raynet up against the dog, and we have a very ser interesting series of games. I'm trying to look at. It. Let's go ahead and tune in. We'll see what we have. Okay, you asked for it. All right. Wow. <laughs> I like how you cheesed out your game. That was beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Frostbolt by is fire bad, I mean the, uh, yeah, the, the hunter. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's better the Frostbolt or it's just play Fallen Hero for trade. But he has to trade anyway, right? Was there any Clive Zuka? You didn't see Clive Zuka? So there was uh, one I Eagle Horn. See yeah, there was an Eagle Horn. No Clive Zuka. Well, I didn't I see I think I can play Zuka. this for the trade. He has to. Oh my god, he has double. One, so I have two of these. Yeah, it's I'll a Frostbolt for now. <laughs> what do you guys think, Stalker or Mechwarp? It's really unimportant. Uh, can you use the Mechwarper yet? Not really, not in a long time. So I guess the Stalker, because he had a, like a Rock Biter. Yeah, Stalker, so Stalker is just better. Yeah, I like it. You see, there's not, not even a Shredder to top deck or... Yeah, if she uh, draws the Whirling Zap and Matter, you can claw it. Just really good. Alright. Doing fine. Probably Ferals, is it? Oh, no. Oh. Okay. What do you think here? Idle spell or idle minion? Uh, I would get the spell. Uh, I would go minion. Cause yeah, you I think don't I don't have, have a minion coming in. Yeah. I'll, I'll do okay. minion. Okay, fine, yeah. That can work. Aspir oh, I can't use that. Mm. Oh. For the next turn, so I think fencing coach is correct. Yeah, I was gonna say next turn you can get a free hero power off, but you're hero powering this turn, correct? What do you guys think? I think hero power and I don't even reveal shade. Uh, -huh. uh two spider, right? <laughs> uh, you could fail on how hero end like being one of these, but this is my last. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I'll see two I'm not gonna trade the two three into the three one. Keep it hidden. Yes, I agree. Definitely go though. Take a little bit of damage, but it's fun. Yep. What do you think? Do you think I should get immediate value by using attack, skulker, and trade? No, probably not. Just Belcher. Yeah. That was a dumb question. <laughs> I like Belcher. Yeah, yeah, that was a dumb question. For some reason, I thought I had a Belcher head. Was there anything to stampede later on? 
Uh, who played the Huggish Hunter? He has uh, a River Crocolisk. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he played it already, actually. Oh. Okay, well, I can play this. That doesn't even trade very well. Oh, it's probably fine. Okay. Skulker. Okay, my choice is All right, looks like Team Liquid is doing a pretty good job uh, just communicating comms. What's your assessment on the game so far, Hype? Uh, you know, is Temple still able to rebound the way they want to this time? Mm, I'm looking at Dog's game with the with the weapon buffs and the weapon, and I'm thinking that's going to go well for him. Um, oh, here we have, uh, who is this? This is Eloise versus... This is Eloise versus Trump. Versus yep. Trump. This one's looking good. Um, Trump has, like, the value with the Cult Master, but Eloise, I don't think she's going to let go of board control here. Yeah, I mean, that's the part of what you were talking about earlier, or you heard them talking about, was that Team Liquid really wanted to uh, have Trump pick up a minion, so that way they could play for the board. But, I mean, this is kind of what you want as the Shaman. Even though you're overloaded for two, you still have several options here. Yeah. Or, sorry, you have three options. It's not, I don't think it qualifies as several. Um, my Berserker puts up the biggest stats in the individual minion, but you can put out a little bit more overall stats by having the Tunnel Trog and the Cog Master, which leads into a turn five play With the of whatever you want. So yeah. it's it's very interesting. What do you think here, Hype? Yeah, no, this looks solid. I, I like it. Um, I would go with just the double one drop into Muklas and Kopi solve the board for that Inspire on turn six. It looks like maybe they'll wait a turn and get like, the guaranteed uh, bananas on turn seven. Oh, man. And this is a setup for Swipe, though, is one of the scariest yeah. things that you don't want to happen to you because Swipe is one of the premium removal spells. Trump does have a follow up play with the uh, Ford drops here and Mech Warper. A little bit complicated because he was talking about how he doesn't want to trade the Mech Warper. Oh, sorry, the 2 3 into the 3 1. So he's going to have to heal power instead, but that means he's forced to go into the Mech Warper play as opposed to something else. Yeah, can we take a look at this uh, mage versus hunter game here? Yeah, let's go ahead and transition. Uh, you know, as we see Trump wrap up the play, going to clean up some of these minions. The mage versus the hunter is Firebat versus Savitz. And taking a look at it, Savitz is ahead in the life total, and he seems to have initiative onto the board, which is usually very good for mage. We saw Firebat did pass up the turn 7 boom, though, for the Kodo. Turn 7 for the Kodo. You are correct. It's not that he got it off of a mirror entity or something. And Savit's so introduced with some pretty decent options here. Frostbolt's usually the most versatile. Uh, Frost Nova is okay to pick it's up if really you want good, to push. Like, he has the board, but in this situation, Frostbolt, he can't mess it up. Yeah. And with the trade as well, how does Firebat respond? He has two four drops and Dr. Boom. This is an interesting point of discussion. Looks like he goes for Tomb Spider to go ahead and load up more spread out because Dr. Boom would funnel everything into the 7 health minion. And there's a Wobble combo. Yeah, there you go. Scavenging Hyena or with the Unleash the Hounds. Yeah, or just the turn 9 play of Dr. Boom scavenging. Sure. You have the Spellbreaker to count at the Hyena Absolutely. There. Oh, it looks like he's going to use it this turn though on the Shredder. Makes sense. Yeah, Spellbreaker is just... Great here because you shut down the pilot shredder from completely sticking onto the board and making it complicated. And you never know if your opponent has some opportunity for some really amazing trades. Okay. He could have gone for like the Regent Arcane Missiles ping, but that might hurt him with the, unsta with the uh, Unleash mm -hmm. the Hounds. Is that Arcane Missiles really zero mana? Yeah, that might be a bug. I, that, that, that has to certainly like, be a bug, which is very from interesting Mike to coach, I think. All right, well, uh, yeah. we got information just as a feed that Raynad has just been defeated by the Rogue deck. So that's 2-0 for the Rogue, and that Warlock mashing up against uh, one that's able to grab a lot of tempo and AoE yeah. is not very strong. So it's up to basically the rest of the team here. They can't drop a single game or else the series is already lost. But if the series is lost, they can still come back into the game score and try to even up as much as they can. Yeah, this actually looks like a potential comeback here. He clears the, the uh, Conjure and the Spellbreaker and gets a really big hyena. It's or the Calvadir. Yeah, it's problematic because of the Cavaldir Raider, right? Yeah, it grows and it grows. It keeps growing, keeps growing, but you have your own threat at the same time. And if you can go even with your opponent in cards, you have the highest value legendary that's not a class card. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's just going to bank on no fireball. I think Firebat recognizes he's very far behind, and Boom is his best chance. Killing off the Ethereal Conjurer, or... Yeah. Spellbreaker, and there it is. Well, uh, that's not Fireball. If he... 
Oh wait, does he have lethal if the if the arcane missiles hit face? Because the growth on the Cavaldi Raider, mm -hmm. that would be eleven. Eh, it's it's very optimistic to say the least. Well met. They're gonna go for a very safe option here. You're in trouble now. I wonder what the boom bots will hit, because it has potential for messing things up as well. Ooh, he didn't. Okay, yeah. I was okay. gonna say he would have attacked with the spellbreaker. Uh, All right. There... Now that hyena can grow a lot, and with the boom bots. Yeah, actually, boom bots might be able to dictate a lot of how this board ends up clearing. Because yeah, you don't want the boom bots minions. to kill the the any of the creatures, for example, because you want more unleash. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, you have too many minions onto the board, so you want to sacrifice boom bots into yeah. things that you want it to kill. Yeah, so he's throwing it into the highest HP thing because he doesn't want anything to die yet. That's oh. exactly well. They would have killed anything except for the pit fighter yeah. and the cavalier itself. So, so now he can uh, unleash without any sacrifice on the board space. He's counting up the scavenging. Maybe we can take a listen and do. Uh, he's counting how much storm. damage. Yeah, it looks like he has it. Is it 22? Oh my goodness, that's a lot of damage. Boomboss didn't actually hit the face, but that's enough. What a sick comeback if that's the case here. Alright, your values, champion. So. Alright, so what's going on? Banana. Oh, that is disgusting. Wow. <laughs> that play is bananas. Uh, yeah, you definitely yeah, kill that, and then on. the rest is going face 100%. Get a rolling taunt totems. That's a good talent. It's a good thing gave you a shot. Yeah. Best RNG. I got Sweet. taunt totem for two turns in a row. So, uh, we're only behind by uh, two points then after this? Yeah, I lost, so. Okay, not bad. So, oh, yeah. Always his hand looks good. If we sweep the final round, then we're tied? Or do we win? We would win then. Huh. Yeah, so just if we sweep, we win. If we get two of the games, we lose, though, right? Do we? Uh, then we'd be, we would have four wins, and they would it's have. It's four to two, so. It would be four to five then, if we. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So if they if they win once, they win. Yeah. All right. That's fine. But I mean, still, like, we still need to make sure that our tiebreakers are really high, so. Yeah. Win as much as possible, definitely. Some hidden value on the so the, I go uh, against Rogue. mechanic there, getting the information. You go against. Uh, what did you not play yet? Uh, Druid. I okay. will play. That's probably my best matchup. Yeah, Druid has to be your best matchup. Yeah, Druid sucks so against eggs. Okay. Not least. Well, remember you have the hero power this turn too to buff your guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. Start with minions. There's one. There's this. So yeah, we oh, want to no, play. No, no, no! I can only play one. No, you can play, you can play two. two. You play a five drop and the one drop, and then you hero power this turn. No, so I haven't got enough mana. Yes, you do. Five. Oh yeah, yeah. Pine size yeah. summoner. Pine size summoner. We do okay. This, we do this. Sure, sure. Because we're pushing for lethal. It makes sense. We we assume Emperor Thorson because we play constructed. So <laughs> this two, I th I guess. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then. Uh. <laughs> Kill him next turn. He must. Uh, he might have taunt, taunt spare part, but uh, this should be enough. I mean, just the infinite value has got to be weighing him down mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he needs like wrath plus okay. sunwalker or something. Mm -hmm. That six six is big. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Nice job. All right. All right. So we rotate one down. All right, so Temple Storm stays alive in the series as uh, they're currently two and four, two and meaning four that if they win the next three games and sweep it out, they'll be five and four to wrap it up and win. But it's still very hard because, I mean, that rogue deck from Dog mm. looks really strong. It's strong. It is yeah. really good, especially if you're afraid of Blade Fury the whole time. That's Absolutely. what makes it better. It's, it's the fear of what it can do, and plus it's explosive. One of the biggest things that uh, people always talk about in Arena is tempo, mm -hmm. uh, how you're able to get ahead of the pace of the game, and ultimately you can leverage what you want to dictate if you want to trade, or if you can just go for the game-ending damage, which with, when Dog has those cards, you know, when he has that oil, very hard to stop. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it comes down to whether or not they can get really good matchups, because Rogue's been really good against both the Warlock and the Shaman. Uh, and that's going to be the key, because ultimately, if Temple Storm's still able to win some games, they'll have a good tiebreaker score like they were talking about in chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be the Rogue against the Hunter this time. Mm -hmm. That'll be interesting. Dr. Boom is pretty yeah. good against Rogue. It's, it's good, and that hero yeah. power also is very impactful. If they can get their early game drops, they push for it. 
Firebat gonna need to really pilot things. No one drop just yet. But Bo, and the difference like between the drop, having one drop and not, is uh, is very interesting here. Okay, so there's something to play. Team Liquid, in the meantime, Dog picks up what looks like to be a pretty good hand. Yeah, is this Mr. Youth Rogue deck right there? That looks with, I mean, with oils in the deck, that kind of looks like a traditional oil rogue deck mm -hmm. outside of a four drop that you'd want. With the coin, I mean, that's that's almost as good as it gets for Dog. Yeah, I'm already worried he queued up with his constructed deck by accident. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be pretty hilarious. Just see two heal bots, and we see like a Doctor Boom in that rogue deck. We're like, wait a second. Crocless, nice. It'll live through the SI7 coin, but they could backstab it if they want. Oh my goodness. I mean, that's that's just a mixture of stuff here. Now, the Crocolisk, it's just proactive, but I mean, maybe they're anticipating that Rogue will heal power on turn two. Yeah, you can't really risk one of the traps. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about Houndmaster yet, and I, you don't really want to backstab SI7. You kind of want to backstab SI7 uh, Animal Companions, for example, mm -hmm. like a Mukla. I mean, a... Uh, the Misha. Misha, you know. yeah. I mean, you can backstab SI7 and uh, a King Mukla, but it won't end pretty unless you have to use your hero power in order to take it down. Uh, but, you know, again, the, the Hunter is really good at pressuring Rogue because Rogue is trying to use a lot of its tempo cards and its own health pool in order to gain advantage onto the board. Yeah. But Hunter is good at closing out the end stages of the game because of the hero power and because of damage cards. We see cards like the Equal Hornbow, for example, might be the difference maker. Interesting. Goes with the backstab on that. Okay, and so he gives up the, the backstab SS7 combo, which is pretty important, but let's see how it works out. All right, so more spells and whatnot. I wonder if uh, Firebat attacks with this, because Hunter wants to be aggressive, and if this was a constructed deck where you got to pick 30 out of 30 cards of ideally what you want, mm -hmm. absolutely, you probably want to go really aggressive against Actually, the Rogue. Well, you know the Eaglehorn Bow kills the SI and the Earthen, but you're probably not expecting those in this format. Sure. So, so he holds on to it. My goodness, there's so many options here. Wobbling runs. That card is really interesting, too, because if you can get to that stage, it has some high value. It's a card that people don't really look at as immediately being one that can define the game, but you never know. Yeah, but maybe it just feeds Firebat's Unleashed uh, Scavenging Hyena combo even more. Yeah, that one was just crazy to wrap up the game. Let's go ahead and take a look and listen into some of these players, see what they're talking about. Let's go ahead, hop into Temple Storm, see what they're chatting about. I don't know. Yeah, up to you. Houndmaster's fine. Yeah. How aggressive is the deck? Pretty aggressive. Pretty aggressive. I don't mind getting two. Tra I think I'm in two traps. At least confuse the hell out of him. But I just want to get bow charges before I have to swing my bow again. I think. And Houndmaster's gonna get better value later. Um. Uh. Whoa. I want to play this, this turn, this next How one. much does it overload you? It overloads you two and then you do the Ogre Brute? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah makes yeah. sense. Is that a second fucking claw? You're in Jeez. trouble now! Oh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna slam Floating Watcher. You haven't seen Swipe yet, right? I've never seen Swipe. Have you seen no, Swipe? No, 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 no. No Swipe? Right, cool. No. So he has to drew to the claw to kill it? I haven't even seen Wass. Or Bite. No, <laughs> no. He has. Uh, oh, shit. I didn't see that either. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that. He oh, has is that funny? We just lost. He has the one mana. <laughs> Such a troll. <laughs> <laughs> he has the one mana hero power for two. We just lost the game. What a scumbag. Who oh, wow. has Bomb Lobber there? Oh. My eyes right. are open. Oh, yo, this is strong. I mean, yeah. Uh-huh. For Blackwing! Do I kill that? With these? Probably not. I think he thinks it's snake trap. Yeah. I 
mean, if you did the math, that would be very unlikely relative to to Dart. But nobody believes that's a card. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping he tries to like go for the the finishing blow here, and it kills one of his minions when uh -huh. he tries to set up his oil. <sighs> okay, do you life tap here or play Mistress of Pain? Uh, I think I do this this tap. I could bolt. I don't want to bolt. Oh my god, he's got the Assassin's Blade to try and kill me now. He's already used the sap, maybe I can stay alive, but it's gonna be tough. So I need a taunt. Alright, how much damage do I have? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30? <laughs> you guys can't that too? 10, mm. 11, 12, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Oh, God. How, oh, I'm messing myself up here. 15, 17. It's definitely 27. 19, 20. I count 26, 29, I think. 12, 14, <laughs> 21, 24. Two. Yeah, 29 for sure. Basically okay. everything. Okay. <laughs> One. 29 for sure, right? <laughs> 29 for sure. 29 for sure. Why do you hit it's like okay. that word? It's okay, I'm gonna you lose it. Go face attack, man. I was thinking one damage off. I, I thought it was, uh, Say something then. <laughs> I counted 29. I trust why you did guys. I count, no, I, why did I count 29 though? You counted 29 too the first time. For the first time I did, yeah. I don't what? know, I, we counted Leoc, I guess. Oh, he couldn't attack? He couldn't attack. Oh. That's embarrassing. Uh, All right, I'm sorry. I'll take okay. the blame for that. That's that's me. <laughs> well, uh, we, we could hit the boom bottle for at last. We already attacked face with everything. <sighs> well, we could have uh, traded and tried to, to stay alive. Not exactly yeah, quite what was planned, hyped. Like sometimes you lose because you miscount. Sometimes you lose. It happens, guys, and uh, it happens to the best of us. Taking a look at Raynad's game, uh, with that mm -hmm. loss on fire bats, and it is guaranteed that Temple Storm loses this series. I believe Eloise and Eloise and Raynad's games are still going on. Raynad mentioned that this is supposed to be a great matchup, and he has some really powerful cards with Shadow Flame to yeah. pick it up in the next couple turns here. Zoo versus Druid is traditionally extremely good, but he was a little frustrated about those claws. Not a card you typically see in Constructed. I think we're gonna see a Shadow Flame here. Temple Storm laughing in the background, apologizing profusely to each other. But you know what? I mean, it's it's part of what makes it great because when you when you make these mistakes, you have to kind of revel in your own misery for a while. You know you made a mistake. You know thousands of people are watching it, and they're making fun of you because it's you know it's a card game where you count how hard could it be. Oh, no, so I've been there. But when you're thinking about a million other things, sometimes it's hard to just like right. take a simple view and like count the numbers yeah and you know what i mean they have less attention span because they're trying to help many yeah, multiple exactly. people so i mean firebat wasn't even looking originally at what was going on he was looking at his teammates yeah seeing what we can go for mm -hmm. eloise in the meantime she's got the board against mage and that mage doesn't look like it has flame strike so that's it's a really good spot because you can continue to leverage the fact that the hero power can't really do much because of the healing totem yeah I think he, there was a misplay, though, asking for help with the counting. Counting something you don't do as a team, you just do as your own. So he just confused everybody, and they just <laughs> all imploded. <laughs> Probably took away from their turns, too. Yeah. Hashtag bring back Ratsuma. <laughs> I know some players do just, even on simple maths, they'll just pop open the Windows calculator. Get it, does, it going. Man. Don't take any risks. It does, man. It's, you know, it, when, you, when you're in that situation, it just stinks. Like a room full of urine. <laughs> Well, uh, taking a look at uh, how you're able to push from this point onwards. I mean, how does Mage come back without Flame Strike? Can you even? It has to be like Flame Waker with some shenanigans. It, it, like you have to hit everything perfectly, mm. dodge the totems, make sure you like snipe the smaller minions, and then just like stay alive based off value. I like just like an Ethereal Conjurer into Frost Nova. This is the time. <laughs> okay. Well, let's take a look at some fireworks here from Savitz. He's going to need it. Uh, in order to come back here. There's like 21 health on board, though. That's like a right. lot of knives or fire and knives. And he can do... 
I guess he doesn't need, need to heal that healing damage? totem. That was like the worst target. Okay. Reasonable. If he can hit the 4-5 four, or 4-4 four, four with the flame cannon, then he might be able to pick apart mm -hmm. more of the board here. And all of a sudden, Eloise's board completely disappears. Yeah, plus he gets a, a spare part of his own. Yeah. That's even more. I would say hitting that Zapomatic was super important. Yeah. If we just get a taunt off the Yeti for our big guy, that would be insane. Oh, yeah. Uh, just real quick as an update, as you can see, we'll Raynat is very far ahead of Trump here, and he's going to wrap it up here with a big Frost Wolf Warlord and a big Zuboard. Finally, the plan goes according to what he wanted to execute, and uh, that's going to do it. Let's go back straight up to the other POV. Looks like the Flame can end up hitting yeah, a totem. Oh, that is brutal. Right, and so looks like they're still Yeti's off live. lethal a little bit. All right, well... I don't really still see a way to easily get past this, even though that was the air totem. This air totem is probably one of the worst ones in this scenario. So with this almost imminent victory, because I don't think that will save Savitz, uh, it looks like Temple Storm drops the series 5-4 to four in mm -hmm. the end. Um, and Team Liquid able to start use their big start to wrap up the series with the match victory. But now comes the question of what ifs, Hype. What if they were able to count that 100 damage correctly <laughs> and change the outcome of it? It could have been a brand new series. Temple Storm could have been 1-0. Who knows? It's, it's really fun to see all of it come together. I like to see it all come down to just a simple <laughs> math error. Uh, that's what we want to see, right, Hype? We that's want what to I see like. I like the it. The drama. Coming for the lulls and the drama. And the cards. Well, that wraps up the first, our second series, the first of both of these teams. A couple of them will come back, a couple handshakes as they recognize that it was a really hard fought match. But five to four is how you want it if you couldn't exactly. have it uh, for a victory for your team. So, uh, Team Liquid did a great job. I love that rogue deck from Dog. Um, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the fact that they were able to help each other. It seems like they were very cohesive about some of those plays, even though they didn't have the best decks. Yeah, they worked together really well. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a little bit of communication yep. errors on the Tempo Storm time, but it's Tempo Storm side. But they're still working together. They're still making an effort. Hopefully, they can improve that. Well, you know, one thing that I do want to point out is that we've had two Dr. Booms drafted, and neither of those teams have grabbed a match victory, for better or for worse, or by human error or by mm -hmm. outcome of fate. Who knows? Either way, it's going to be really exciting to see what's going to develop here at the Red Bull Team Brawl. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have yet another match to continue to see who is going to get the lead and ultimately call themselves a Tavern Brawl victor. Stay tuned.